Hello! In this Dungeons & Die Rolls, I'm going to unpack all of my loot from Gen Con 2019. So I just got home from Gen Con. It's actually about 1.30 in the morning as I'm doing this. I drove all day, left at a little before 10 in the morning. And uh, I would normally do something like this with a night of sleep in between, but first thing in the morning, I have some friends coming over to try out a bunch of the new games that I got. <coughs> So I thought that it would be kind of cool and fun to do an unpacking, unboxing video that I could slap up and just have people look through all the, all the stuff I got. So I'm going to go through my free swag, my miscellaneous purchases, and then unboxing all of the board games that I picked up. Okay, I'm not going in any very special order here, just sort of as I pull things out of my pack. The first thing that I have here is I got a handful of these pre-painted RPG terrain pieces from Legendary Realms. And I've actually seen stuff on their website. I thought it looked pretty cool and not ordered any of it. Then they had this nice booth and big display there. And it's pretty nice stuff. It's just pretty fountain here that goes in the middle of a city plaza. I have some campfires of different styles. Two of these bookcases and this neat little altar with candles and a book. And those are going to look really nice decorating up my Dwarven Forge stuff and just my regular maps when I don't want to whip out all the Dwarven Forge. And so that, that's a solid purchase for me. Next, I'll dig everything out of here. And uh, the bag is, in fact, a lie because there are lewd things in it. I enjoy the cosplay deviants and I like to get their art books. And so I have their Tokyo tour, which I'm not going to pull out of here on camera because it has butts and stuff on it and I don't want to offend anyone but it's in there um, I did get this rule book for Nexus Redemption the role-playing game and it's a preview rule book I haven't looked entirely through it to know exactly what that means whether it's playable uh, seems like it's playable in here they there's a page on the back that says what they left out. So they left out crafting factions, bestiary, cybernetics, things like that. But I did kind of like the some of the concepts in the pitch that the creator gave to me, where you have dice with different attributes on them that you roll along with a d6 for a value. And so those attributes are going to inform your role-playing description of how you succeeded or failed at the skill check you're trying to do. So I think that's kind of neat. And uh, I'll check it out for free. I like it. Then I have in here, I have some dice, right? Oh, I've got this, uh, got this cool enamel pin of Stanza from Too Many Bones. Of course, I have to have the bard as I'm a musician so that was pretty cool and it's actually really nice it's large and has some detail and it's very cool and then I have now I have some dice so here's the Gen Con dice from Crystal Cast and every year they offer different colors and they have a free D6. You can get this just out of the, with a coupon from the coupon book. And it's branded with Gen Con 2019 on one side and Crystal Cast for the other. Uh, you have to decide which is which, but clearly Gen Con should be the six, right? The good roll. And then you can pay, as I did, 
to pick up the rest of the set. And this year is pretty nice. It's like a red and gold marbled. So I think that's very nice. And I just always pick up the set to be kind of a completionist. And I have the tin and I have a little display case I made that I put them in. And in fact, I have to make a third level for the display case because they each hold four and this is my ninth year going. So, haha. And then I have some number of free dice here. I have one from the fans of Gen Con page. This is solid blue B6. And I got one from Metallic Dice Games has been giving a one giving one away each year. And this is a this is a nice purple and has MDG and the year on it for the six face. And then I got this D20, which is not anything special, but it's a free D20. It's a light purple speckled thing. And I got that from the Noise Complaint concert that I went to. And I love Noise Complaint, tap dance, cosplay, very cool people, very funny, very good dancers. So I enjoy that. Then the last dice I have are this, and this is a new thing that Chessex is doing. I don't know if it's a new thing this convention or if it's a new thing this year at all of their conventions, but they had a table with about half a dozen different dice and they're called lab dice. And they're prototypes of dice models that they're planning on, that they're considering making. And so they, there's a limited print run and they're selling them at the conventions. And then they say that they're going to use those sales to evaluate whether or not the dice get full print runs. So you either get a early prototype of one of their dice ranges, or if they don't make it, then you get a limited edition prototype that never got a full print run. And these are, uh, if I can open them, argh, ah, they're from a new luminary line. They're glow in the dark. And so I'm not gonna be able to really show it off on camera, of course, but I think they're a very neat color. They're this, uh, the more translucent parts are kind of like a translucent peach with some darker red swirling around through it and the gold numbers and they glow in the dark or under black light the guy was using a black light i think and they had a uh, they had glowing speckles all over them which is pretty neat but even just by themselves i think the color is nice and it's not quite like anything else that i saw by them so that's pretty cool i picked up a box of their lab dice and Speaking of Noise Complaint, shout out to Noise Complaint for noticing them and telling people about it at their concert. And I would not have looked at Chessex enough to see them if they hadn't. So, ta-da! Okay, I'm redoing this take because I was about halfway through it and I was gesticulating off camera and my arm hit this rather large spider coming down from the ceiling. So I had to pause to scream like a girly girl and defecate in my pants and kill the spider. So anyway, I'm going to start going through my games in a, like smaller to larger size. And so the first one is Slide Quest. And I've had my eye on this for a good portion of the year. I saw a preview video for it on Board Game Geek before Origin, so I guess it must have been the New York Toy Fair. Maybe someone will correct me. But anyway, um, at that point it was only in French, only in Europe. Um, but I was hoping that they would come out with an English localization and release it over here. And they did at Gen Con. So I grabbed it. And it looks like a very, very cute dexterity game, which I think is fun. Uh, all of these games are not going to have manuals in there because I took them out. I already took shrimp wrap, shrink wrap off and pulled manuals out, so I was reading the instructions over the weekend before I got home. But, ta-da! So there are... This is 
pretty large stack. These are not thick cardboard. So uh, that's a lot of game mats here, little boards to use, and they are double-sided. So that's a lot of variety right there. And then this is the plastic. So the idea is that I'm going to have this. You choose just one of these mats to go on it. And then you're going to take these plastic levers and stick them on the sides of the box underneath this tray. And each player is going to have one, or if you have fewer than four players, and you know, one player might control two. But each player is going to have one of these levers, and you're using them to tilt that board around while your little knight with a marble up his butt is sitting on there and he's going to start rolling around the map as you tilt the game board and you're trying to not fall down the hole, knock other things into the hole, all that kind of stuff. So it looks super cute. And it's a little cardboard tracker for things and a little, you're tra keeping track of the level and how much life you have. So the intent is that you're playing a few maps in a row, a few levels in a row. And then there are some little wooden meeple things. These are, I think, the enemies that you'll put up on the path set up there and try to knock over. And then some other obstacles. There's a gateway and some fences that will get stuck onto the maps. And that's it. Uh, it's a cute little $25 game. And I think it looks charming. I like short dexterity things. And uh, hopefully that'll be a good time. The next largest game that I have here is Towers of Arcanos, is what I'm going with. I think I heard someone say Arcanus, but that doesn't really work with the H for me. So I'm going with Arcanos. Um, this is a this is a little dice placement. I forget if there's dice drafting. I think you roll your own dice and then place them. But anyway, uh, it's a dice placement game and you're using dice and meeples and constructing up layers of towers. And I don't know what's up with this year. I got several dice and worker placement games that I don't really have any of. And then I got a bunch in that genre. So anyway, uh, there's here and then we have some shrink wrapped boards of tokens to punch out. Keep track of score. Uh, I think it's called prestige in this. Then there are some little spell books and you can place dice on these to store them up and then cast them later to activate their effects and manipulate die values and such like that. And um, get, you don't just choose to put them here. It's one of the effects when you place onto a tower space can let you put another die onto this. So there's that. And then this is the keeping track of the rounds and such. And then there are some little meeples with stars in them. Those are your masters. And these are all the apprentice meeples. And these are all the tower layers. So each tower has a location for a die to be placed, and you always put a meeple right next to it. And the central towers like this, you just put them there, and you'll get, uh, they work on area control. So when the, when the floor, each floor of the tower is full, whoever has the most presence there gets more points. But then the non-central towers is going to be a little setup of four towers. The non-central ones have icons on the dice that you're placing there. And those are going to do things for you. They're going to let you place into your spell book, uh, place a meeple by itself on another dice uh, spot so that you're getting more of the area control, uh, and then they also are limited 
in color and value of dissecting who get put there. And so there is a, there's approximately a metric butt ton of different tower floors. So that says to me lots of variety in gameplay there, lots of different tower floors, and you might see either face of them during a given game. And then of course there are tons of dice, and they're in different bright colors, and they're translucent, and purple is one of the colors, so that makes me happy. And here's a dice bag for it. So that looks pretty sweet. My next next game up is Nocturion, another dice placement game. And this one has a fantasy theme. You're basically vying for control of this fantasy empire. You're trying to be like the, the next vizier to the emperor. And so you're com accomplishing tasks and completing quests to impress the emperor. And I liked a couple of things about it. I like the way that there's a central mechanism for regulating the speed of the game, how long it lasts, or how quickly it progresses. And that also regulates how the resources on the board replenish. And then there's a little bit of tableau building where you have your own little house area and you're, coll you're collecting artifacts and placing beasts into a bestiary that you can then activate for additional effects. So there's a little bit of engine, not, not really engine building, but you're expanding your ability on successive rounds. So uh, that's pretty cool. So let's see what's in here. Also, worst pitch of a game that entire convention. I had looked up the game and I had watched the, I had watched uh, Vesuvius's little like computer generated how to play video. And I thought it looked pretty cool, but I wanted to check it out in person. And I went to the booth and the guy was showing it off and just the worst pitch. He didn't talk barely at all about the mechanisms of the game. He didn't show off the tableau building. The He really, really briefly showed the areas of the board that you put dice on, showed the track, and he's like, yeah, and it's a really good game. Very fun. Buy it. Okay. So, punch boards. Lots of uh, point things. And this is the piece that's going to go in the center. And it shows you, if you happen to grab the resources it's pointing at, you get two of it. And then it's showing the other side is going to replenish its resources. And then these are a couple of special tiles that go out onto dice placement locations that you get when you drop a dude there. Drop a dude. Not a deuce, but a dude. Uh, and here's all the different resources, as well as tokens to show that you've exhausted one of your beasts or family art of heirlooms, artifacts, heirlooms, something, uh, to show that you've used it for the round. And here are various, these are the locations that will get placed randomly out onto the board. More locations. The game board itself has pretty decent art. It's a little darkish, but uh, everything that's on it contrasts well. So it doesn't really need to have exciting art, I guess. It's supposed to be a kingdom that's somewhat in decline. So that's that. Then there are these, these are the player boards. So you have three family heirlooms that you can put into your armory. And then you have places in your bestiary to play beast cards as you can afford them. And it has a little reference of the abilities that you get as you collect the set of your family heirlooms. And they are different. The middle one is different um, per family house. Family house thing. Yeah. Faction. Roll. And then there's little cards. 
I think these are V event cards, or I don't. Uh, I'll look it up. But anyway, little cards, and these are some of the larger quest cards, the beast cards, and the dice. And that's it. And a big old insert that's taking up a lot of space. Okay, then we have a game that I've also been following a while, not as long as Slide Quest, but for a little while, and that is Abomination, the Heir of Frankenstein. And I thought that the description of it sounded very cool, and when it started, we started getting previews of the artwork and the game components, and it was nice and dark and macabre and kind of grisly. I really liked that. And I was reading through the manual, and there's just such entertainingly thematic things in there where there's a decomposition phase, and you have to track how decomposed the various organs and body parts you've collected are before they become unviable for your work in creating a companion for Frankenstein. So there's this little, I don't know what this is, story bit. Yeah, I'm going to story thing. Uh, and then, so these are the player mats. And you're going to be assembling your Frankensteinian creation over there. And you have some attributes that you're tracking. And they will do different things. The, um, like, your humanity is going to decrease or increase depending on things that you do during the game. If you send your minions to collect corpses from the cemetery, you'll get body parts you can use, but it decreases your humanity. And um, I have to double check. There's a, there's a point, yeah, there's a point penalty as you start going too far down the humanity track. Um, yeah, and then there's reputation. If you have a high reputation, you can buy cadavers from the hospital because you're like, oh yeah, he's a legit doctor. He does research and that kind of thing. And there's expertise. So those all interact with your various actions. And then we have punch boards. So just look at these. <laughs> look at these body parts. Look so cool. And they are going to be double-sided because you have, first you put down a body part and it's just, uh, it's muscle. And then you upgrade that body part to skin. And then you upgrade it a second time and it's alive. And you need to have, of course, all the parts of the monster in the alive state in order to have the completed creature and win. And more tokens. More tokens. And the game board. And then underneath are lots of cubes of different colors for various resources. Here are the dice that you roll when you try to charge up or you try to shock the body parts and animate them. And it can either successfully charge them or it can go horribly wrong and mess up your body. Not like your body, but the cadaver that you're working on. Uh, and then you have meeples in different sizes and shapes. So there are little henchmen meeple and then there are big scientist meeple. And so depending on what you do, you're eventually going to be controlling a crew of both scientists that are doing your evil bidding and and a little underling henchmen that just go out and you know dig things out of graves and stuff like that and then there's some reference cards for how to construct the monster and these are some event cards and other little cards body with the, the body parts and stuff that you get from random draws. So that's Abomination.
The last game I got is ta -da -da, Black Angel, another dice placement game. The fact that I have this here is kind of a life triumph for me. It was on my short list, one of three games that I knew I wanted to buy going to the con. And I also knew that it was pretty hot, had a lot of people talking about it, a lot of people wanting to buy it, and so it was the first one that I made a run for. And things were organized in a way that kind of upset me because it was certainly not listed in the entries for the games on the Gen Con preview on BoardGameGeek. It might have been in their, you know, it might have been announced on their forums or someplace else. But uh, a lot of the games from companies owned by Asmodee were not sold at their booths. They were sold at a central Asmodee shop. And so when I stood in line for an hour before the opening of the exhibit hall, and then I ran for um, Pearl Games, they said, oh, yeah, we don't have it. It's over there. So by the time I got there, it was wrapping around two booths and is sold out with uh, within like an hour, hour and a half or so of the, of the exhibit hall opening. And when I asked people at Asmodee if they were going to get any more, if they had a daily allotment, the answer was, we're sold out. We might be getting a shipment in the middle of the day on Friday, but don't count on it. So I was kind of bummed. And then one of my friends was walking through the con on Friday, mm, late morning, 11 something, and happened to see it in a dude's shopping bag in front of her. So he texted me and said, this guy has it. She swung by, swung by and they had gotten a shipment in in the morning which was not what they expected anyway i ended up getting a copy of the game before it sold out the second time so i'm pretty happy that i have this here let's take a look now this game is about a colony ship carrying the the last of humanity they're non-specific frozen cryosleep travel tube something and it's manned by several AI computers to pilot the ship and make it through to the destination planet that we've scouted out and land safely restart the human race and as it's flying it's got to maintain the ship it has to weather alien attacks and the AIs are going to start diplomatically dealing with these other alien races that they encounter mid-flight. So here's some little... Okay, so this is a little reference appendix. I took the rule book out, but uh, this is uh, just showing what all the effects on all of the different tiles and cards are. And then these are player reference? Yeah, player reference. Here is the game board. It has Pretty cool art, very unique, very sci-fi, kind of abstract with the blues and purples and that kind of thing, and the bright colors for the action areas. The, the instructions are garish, not quite ugly. Um, all the boxes, the instruction book is not near me at the moment, but the boxes are all in brighter than this. They're all in bright pink and blue and purple all next to each other. So it's very kind of visually jarring. Like I said, not quite nasty, but an interesting choice. Uh, anyway, here are your punch boards. So each player is going to have a play mat that they're using to reprogram. <laughs> <clears throat> they're going to reprogram their AI knowledge base with alien technologies that they're picking up. And then you can activate in rows or columns to activate multiple at a time if you, if you can. 
if you have more than one in that row or column. But you're going to be activating those programs for side actions and side effects aside from your actual grabbing a die, placing it to do a thing. So there's player mats and technology tiles, alien research. And then there are, these are going to be, there's going to be an array of these, and that's representing the area of space that the ship is in. And they're going to be moving around as you progress through the game, and they have different locations on them representing the different kinds of aliens that you have contact with. And you can place mission cards on there and fly drones out there to interact with the aliens there, complete the missions, get lots of points from doing that stuff. And then we have the last of it. Here are, these are the mission cards that you use to interact with the aliens, the dice in different colors that you use to activate your shipboard systems, as well as the missions and things like that. Some different color resource tokens, uh, feels like a very nice pile of baggies, that's always appreciated. There's a cool little miniature for the ship that's going to go on that track representing its movement through space, and these cool little plastic robots that are the workers each player has access to, and they move between being available to zip around and go to the mission cards and representing how many dice you get to roll at the beginning of a new round. Well, that's for this year. Over the next couple of weeks, I may be doing some reviews or tutorials or something for some of the games that I showed off there. So uh, if you have any interest in the interest in these new releases then subscribe to the channel and stay tuned and check out what i have coming up for you